We all know Korean fried chicken has exploded in popularity over the past decade, but the fanciest and most expensive fried chicken restaurant in America is now Korean. Yeah, like this is a sort of like premium Kia Telluride version of like Korean fried chicken. Hope you guys enjoy. Um, Andrew, Woo! we gotta talk about two different articles that went viral. One is uh, about a brand new chicken spot that just opened up in New York City that is quite possibly the most expensive and fanciest fried chicken restaurant in America and quite possibly the world. Whoa. We're talking the about uh, Kotodak. Kotodak opened up by the Coat uh, team. You know, they're known for the very well known uh, Korean barbecue that kind of. Kind of like changed the game a little bit. Kind of knocked Korean barbecue up one notch. Right. So they're seeing the if they can do the same thing to Korean fried chicken. Woo! This Woo! is kind of crazy. Um, not only that, there's a new article that came out that said Korean fried chicken is actually the, the number one ranked K food outside of the USA. So oh, yeah. kimchi still ranks as more associated with Korea. But you know, and I know, Andrew, that Korean fried chicken, because it is a Koreanized version of an American food, it probably has more universal appeal than kimchi, right? Oh, yeah. Which is I, fermented cabbage with gochujang in the ground. Dude, I I hardly hear anybody turn down Korean fried chicken. Even if they know it's like Korean style, they're just like, it's fried chicken, though? Well, let's try it. You're saying that you've seen multiple races where they wouldn't eat kimchi, love Korean fried I, chicken. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Fried chicken is one of the most universal proteins, tasty proteins in the entire world. Because guess what, David? There is not a race or religion or major religion that is barring from eating fried chicken. Like, everybody can eat it. That's a good point. Yeah. I can't speak for all religions. I'm right. just well, saying of the major ones. It depends on what oil it's cooked in. Well, okay, fine. But you know what I mean. Like, who's turning down fried or roasted chicken? Nobody. Hey, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications right now. But you know what else would taste delicious on Korean fried chicken, especially if it was the plain style? Oh, not just Korean fried chicken. This goes well on every fried chicken. You drizzle a little bit of smala sauce, and it lights it up, all right? Uh, David, so going off of... I, do you believe that to some people, some generation, that KFC to them means Korean fried chicken and not Kentucky fried chicken? Oh. No, I think so. Dude. To a younger generation, yes. for sure. Yes. That's more growing up in maybe a coastal city. Um, as we know, I would say KFC even lost a lot of uh, headroom to like Jollibee's or Popeye's recently. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because KF at one point, I believe KFC was really the only fried chicken chain in America yeah. that was like hyper- uh, multinational. Uh, Dave, you want to give a shout out to all these fried chicken, Korean fried chicken chains real quick? I mean, yeah. there's a lot of them. Yes, 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 in America. yes, yes. We got to talk about it because, Andrew, some of these dishes have yet to make it to America. Wow. Andrew, leading off, we've got BBQ chicken, famous yeah. for golden olive fried style chicken. It is a little bit more Western, but it tastes like olive oil. It's pretty good. It's good. This is good. It's been around. Specifically, I, you can, the golden olive fried chicken at BBQ chicken. You can is get good. this in America. BHC Chicken, I believe it is a chain, Andrew, if, correct me if I'm wrong, that has yet to enter the U.S. market. It's known for trying a bunch of different powders, seaweed powder, curry powders on the chicken. Mm. Do you agree with me that the powdered flavors have yet to really take uh, a grip in America? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the whole powder flavors is not getting too crazy, but I will tell you this, man. I just tried some Korean fried chicken, like uh, uh, popcorn chicken, Korean popcorn chicken, that you dip, and this is trendy in Korea, you dip in cream, or you dip in sweet grape syrup, grape syrup, or you dip in blueberry syrup, and stuff like this. Almost these, like chicken and waffles minus the waffles. Yeah, these type of things are popular in Korea somewhere. I'm not saying they're going to take off in America the same way, but I got it at a Korean stall okay. in, in Queens. So I got something interesting for you. BHC, Andrew, in Seoul, Korea, is also known for doing bubble sausage. Bubble sausage is the grilled tapoki, and then there is a smoky link, and then a grilled tapoki, and then a smoky link. And they actually oh. serve that, uh, that. That started to come to the U.S. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that, honestly. I just, I'm not a fan of fried tapoki personally, but sure. It'll be interesting to see how much of the sides can make it over or will it kind of just stay soy, garlic, gochujang, and plain flavor. Um, moving on, Andrew, Pelicana. Pelicana Pel is a chain that has made it over to the U.S., right? I guess it lost favor in Korea, but they were uh, credited with inventing that soy, garlic flavor originally. Guys, Pelicana, very good. And like we, so good. Yeah. 
like we said, guys, all these chains have their thing that they're known for in Korea. And next up, Nene Chicken is known for a thing called Padak Chicken, where they put a ton of green onions on top of boneless chicken and sometimes even put a special soy sauce on top of the green onions. For me, of all the Korean fried chicken variations and derivatives, Andrew, this is my favorite. Whoa. I'm going to give the Padak Chicken a 10 out of 10. You got to give it the Mashi So. I know that you you don't like it as much as me. Oh, well, we could talk about it. We could talk about it. We may have differing tastes on fried chicken, David. We are not the same person. Uh, they're also known for their snowing chicken, which is their version of a cheddar mm -hmm. dust. Um, number five, Andrew, Kyochan. Kyochan. Kyo classic. Good. Classic. Known for really thin breading. I guess that's what they're known for, having the thinnest I like it. I breading. like it. Um, ultimately, Andrew, what are your, what is your feelings on the mo basically the most expensive fried chicken in America is now Korean fried chicken. Well, I'm not, so, obviously, I'm not talking so, about in general. I'm talking about one spot. So let me tell you this, guys. This is my hot and, take. And we're going to pop up some photos right here to, so people can understand what you're talking about. And I about. love a lot of Korean food. But I think Korean fried chicken, to me, is not categorically better than American fried chicken. Like, I think it just depends on how good the person's executing it. Now, I will say this. From the Korean fried chicken spots, and I've had my fair share of cheap, low-end, like, Hood fried chicken, oh, like, like Kennedy, station. like Kennedy's fried chicken, crispy, crunchy fried chicken. I eat that. But I'll say this, you, the quality of the, the, the average quality of Korean fried chicken, if you're cooking it, I think is a little higher. I don't necessarily think I like it better. I don't always want to eat it all the time. I don't always want soy garlic flavor. I don't always like that crust, but I will say the average quality is better than like the average fried chicken spot. Now, if you get fresh Popeye's, Fresh Popeyes versus fresh, like, comparable Korean fried chicken, I might take Popeyes over it maybe 70% of the time. Right, like spicy Popeyes. Yeah, then. spicy Popeyes or Jollibee's. I might take that over the Korean fried chicken because I prefer but, that but, style. But, but, what but, about, but, but I'll tell you this. A Popeyes is not going to look like this on no. the inside. And it's not going to have nuggets with oh my gosh. Uh, caviar fish roe on top. Guys, I got to try this spot, Coco Dock. Um, there's a bucket list for 38 per person. I'm not sure. And it's not clear how many pieces of chicken you get for $38, but you get a bunch of sides and you get some frozen yogurt. So you'll probably get a few pieces, but it looks like you get a bucket, but that's not for just one person. But anyways, it looks pretty good. And they also have this, uh, chicken nugget with caviar. Now I actually heard from a lot of my chef friends for years that they were putting caviar on fried chicken nuggets. Now this is a thing that's been going on in the chef circles. But now they're serving it here at Coco Dog, so I'm interested. Momofuku had caviar on fried chicken yeah. uh, five, yeah. six, seven years ago. Yeah. So one thing, though, David, I got a question. Coco Dock looks good, but it is pricey. You could probably drop easily 50 a person on fried chicken. I, I would imagine the average tab, let's just say it's 100. But I'm because gonna be you're going to get two drinks, that's 22 but, a pop, that's 44 but I'm gonna be real. plus a 38. I've seen people drop 50 a person at Sweet Chick, which is a southern-style fried chicken spot. Right. It's not cheap. That right. Sweet Chick's not cheap. Um, but anyways, do you think that... I think that this spot's giving you a better deal than Sweet Chicken. Yeah, I do think so. I think so. I wonder if those chicken nuggets are better than Fresh McDonald's chicken nuggets. Man, Fresh McDonald's nuggets, fire. Okay, so I think that this is where an interesting point comes in, Andrew, where there's tastiness and then there's the quality. I don't think you can argue that if they're getting these from the most expensive Amish chicken farms, free range, these chickens are only being fed the best highest quality, right. you know, feed or whatever they feed them. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that the quality in a way is undisputably better, but it doesn't mean that you'll enjoy it more, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's with a lot of things that you pay a, a high amount for. You can oftentimes, people will say this. I, I get, I'll say this a lot. Man, I understand the quality is really good, but I'm not enjoying this as much. And the enjoyment also comes from other factors. The ambiance, to be honest, the price I'm paying. Right. You know what I mean? The freshness of food. Isn't it okay to charge $40 a person for fried chicken, though? Because, Andrew, all Cheval, all these burgers, every city in America, every major city, right, that has Morton's has a $50 burger yeah. across America yeah. right now. Yeah, why can't there be $50 fried chicken? Who said there can't be? Like, I don't, I don't know if it's worth every dollar, but I'm going to try it. You know what I mean? Because, like, 
I want to know what this level of fried chicken is like. They got it from the best farms upstate. They probably marinated, brined it in the best thing. Blah, blah, blah. It's fried to perfection. It's probably fried fresh. You get all these sides. They probably have thought out this whole like way that you order that you eat the food in. Uh, you eat this and then you eat the chicken and you take a bite of the radish and then you eat the soft serve at the end. They probably, it's a lot of thought that's gone into it. We'll see how it does. Let us know what you guys think in the comments section below of the of the upscaling of comfort foods. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Does it just come down to the value proposition and if it delivers on and, that equation? And I want to know what your guys' thoughts. Do you think Korean fried chicken at any point in America's history, being it being known as Korean fried chicken, not getting like changed, you know, the name, as long as it's known as Korean fried chicken, could it overtake the American fried chicken? You know what I've noticed? I've noticed that some non-Asians... They don't even know that it's Korean. That's a good point. Like they're just in there just ordering chicken. No, they just think they just know it's chicken. You're right. Not everybody knows. Wow. Guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. slide in there, guys. I think the Koreans Listen, are sliding guys, in there. Is Padak Korean fried chicken going to make it? Is the snow chicken with the cheddar cheese and the garlic and the onion powder going to make it? Or is it going to stay the current you know, binary. You just got plain gochujang, soy garlic, guys. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Fun one, real light topic. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.